A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. I invite you to be seated as we will have uh, some of our youngsters here uh, acting out various parts of our gospel tonight. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Chirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph, too, went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region, living in the fields, and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone all around them, and they were struck with great fear. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For today, in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find him, you will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Suddenly, there was a multitude of heavenly hosts with the angel. And they were praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels went away from them to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us then go to Bethlehem to see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that had been told them about the child. All who heard it were amazed 
by what, they, what had been told to them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things reflecting on them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. The Gospel of the Lord. It's always uh, cute and tender moments when the uh, children reenact the gospel of uh, the story of uh, the birth of Jesus Christ. And even as the story is described to us, it's a very uh, tender moment in the life of the world and the life of the Holy Family. Mary and Joseph are the first ones to see the birth of Jesus, obviously, but it's the shepherds who are the first ones who are told what it really means, what the birth is all about. They're the poor, the basic, the average workers in the field, unbelievers in general. And they get the message before the Jewish priests, before the king, before royalty, before anybody else. The message goes first to the shepherds. The shepherds are the ones who are working at night. Most people, of course, are not working at night. The shepherds um, are the ones who are living in the fields, is what uh, the Gospel tells us from St. Luke. Most of the people are in the city. In fact, the cities are packed because there's a census going on and everybody's leaving the small villages going to the big cities. So the shepherds are pretty much all alone. Small towns are empty. They're the ones who are in the fields. It's late at night. And yet they're the first ones to receive the message. Um, normally they'd be the last ones to get any news whatsoever, but they're the first ones to get the message. And so when the angel of the Lord appears, the glory of God shines, is what the um, Gospel tells us from uh, St. Luke. The glory of God shines, and the shepherd's first response is fear. They're afraid of the lone angel. It's maybe one of their first time powerful experiences with God. It's a um, personal experience with the Lord, um, something that uh, they're unsure about. And this message of the angel is not just to, um, be to not be afraid, but it tells them to go away. Go to the city, go from away, away from where you live right now, drop your job right now, leave your job at this moment, and go to see a normal sight. Go see a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. A baby who is also God, as they get that message. And so they're told to do something very simple, something very mundane, other than the fact that they're told to leave where they live and to leave where they work. And so, the shepherds have a decision to make, right? Do they leave their job behind for the moment? Do they leave the sheep behind? Do they leave what's normal and familiar? Yet, St. Luke tells us in the Gospel that they go in haste, that they're ready to go. And all they do when they get there, St. Luke says, is they share the message that the angel told them. They just tell what they saw and what they heard to Mary and Joseph and anyone, and anyone else who is there. And as the Gospel says, um, all who hear them are amazed. In some sense, it's the shepherds who evangelize Mary and Joseph. They see the birth of Jesus, they've had their dreams from the Archangel about what's going on and what Jesus is about. But the message of the shepherds from the angels is a fuller and a stronger message. And by sharing what they saw and what they heard, it's the shepherds who evangelize, in a sense, preach to Mary and Joseph, the ones who are changed. They share their experience. And then at the end of the Gospel, they simply return to where they live and they return to where they work. The difference now is they're not alone in belief and faith, and now they're the ones who are glorifying and praising God. So in many ways, um, the story of, of the Gospel is very much a story of conversion of an ev evangelization. The idea that God meets you where you are. He meets you in your home. He meets you at your place of work. He meets you maybe in places where you least expect. He meets you in the late hours of night, early hours of the morning, wherever it may be. And actually, it's not usually the first place He meets you is in church or Mass. It's not usually the first place. It's a common place for Him to meet you, but it may not be the first one initially. And sometimes you may have experienced in your life that encounter with God or the first one 
can be sometimes a little bit fearful, just because it's a lot of unknown is involved. And because the Lord calls you to change, He calls you to something new. Or maybe there's fear of being unworthy in the sight of God. I can't get closer to you, Lord, because I'm not worthy of you because of my past and because of my sins. And so sometimes there's a little bit of fear there too. But as the message of the angel um, says, there's also something about encountering God that's a temptation to go and to lose yourself more deeply in Him and to find peace there as well. That there can be a peace that replaces the fear. And so the Lord tempts you, He tugs at your heart to go where He's inviting you. To a place that's not known, to go to church, to be involved in a community of people, to go to worship with others, or to share a message that you're not quite sure you understand. Because sometimes when we encounter God, it's hard for us to explain it. Right? How do I put into words what I'm feeling? How do I put into words my doubt? How do I put into words my encounter with God? And how do I pick up some things and leave, even if just for a little while, to follow Him, to follow where He's leading me? But the shepherds are a good model. The shepherds go and they evangelize. That is, they simply tell their story of faith, what they experience. Nothing more and nothing less. Right? The shepherds aren't preaching doctrine and catechism to Mary and Joseph. Shepherds are not Bible scholars who can point to the Old Testament and say, okay, this is why your son is the Messiah. All they do is tell what they saw and heard. They tell their experience of God, period. And now they're the ones who glorify and praise God. They take the place of the angels. The angels go away, stop praising God. Now it's the shepherds, the ordinary, average person who goes away praising and glorifying God. And because they actually went, they realize they're not alone anymore. That there are others who've had experiences like mine. Maybe Mary and Joseph related to the shepherds their story, their encounters with an angel. But at the end, by the time they go away, the shepherds are convinced that they're not alone in these experiences of God. They're not alone in their faith in Jesus Christ and who this baby is going to be. They're not isolated or alone anymore. They're changed because they went and they discovered a God, the God that meets them there, along with other believers too. For us in our lives, um, we encounter God in different ways, but a lot of times it's very much by picking up and going and being with a community of persons. Pope Francis, in his latest um, exhortation, his latest letter, The Joy of the Gospel, talks about how God calls us and invites us to be with him and others. And he writes, For just as some people want a purely spiritual Christ, someone you can't touch or feel, without flesh and without the cross, they also want their interpersonal relationships provided by sophisticated equipment, by screens and systems which can be turned on and off on command. Meanwhile, the Gospel tells us constantly to run the risk of face-to-face -face encounter with others, with their physical presence, which challenges us, with their pain and their pleas, with their joy, which infects us in our close and continuous interaction. True faith in the incarnate Son of God is inseparable from self-giving, from membership in the community, from service, from reconciliation with others. The Son of God, by becoming flesh, summoned us to the revolution of tenderness. A great image that he, uh, Pope Francis provides, a revolution of tenderness. You hear the story of the birth of Jesus, and it brings a smile to your face. You can, we can all imagine a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, right? We know what that looks like, and you want to touch the baby, you want to hold the baby, and it brings a smile to your face, and there is no more tender image than that. And that's the first way that God physically appears to human beings. First way that God himself appears. So that God, sometimes we think of awesome and fearsome, fearful, and there, maybe there's some truth to that. But God appears, first of all, as um, cute, right? It's not usually the first adjective we have for God. What a cute little baby. How cute. <laughs> And that's the first way, the first impression that we have of God. 
of what he's like. And of course, Jesus grows up to teach us so much more, but it's a tender moment. And it's a moment when humanity needs to hold God because a baby can't do anything for himself. Humanity needs to take care of God. There's a moment of tenderness there. And so Pope Francis calls us to that kind of tender encounter with God, but especially in the context of community, so that we don't believe isolated, all on our own, where it's just me and my Bible and that's enough. Or in some God that's way out there somewhere, that's purely spiritual and not physical. Because as Pope Francis reminds us, and as Jesus reminds us all the time too, what you do to the least of my brothers you've done to me, we encounter God in other people. And, and um, Pope Francis calls us back to that revolution of tenderness, something that touches our hearts and changes us. In the Gospel um, today, God calls the shepherds. They have a powerful encounter with him, and God calls them and us to encounter him more, to leave something behind, not forever to leave your work or your home, but maybe sometimes for a little while to encounter him in a faith community and church, to encounter him in other people, in a very personal and sometimes a peaceful and gen joyful and tender way. And so that moved by joy, you're driven to share the gospel message as well. You're driven to be involved in your family, in your church, in your community in some ways, and then you're the ones who end up evangelizing. That is, sharing your experience what you saw and what you heard. Pope Francis goes on to write in his um, encyclical, in his letter, he says, In your heart, you know that it is not the same to live without him, God, which you have come to realize what has helped you to live and given you hope is what you also need to communicate to others. You know the joy of faith. You know the joy of the good news. Christ the Savior is born for us this day. You know the joy of encountering God in different ways in your life, and that's what you must communicate with others, just like the shepherds as well. We're grateful, um, thankful this day for the way that God interacts with us, for the gift of the life of His Son, Jesus Christ, who comes to us in powerful ways, yet ways that are simple and tender as well. And we try to imitate the shepherds in the gospel story of today. We might be ones who not just hear the gospel, but are filled with great joy. The fact that God loves you, and that God has given his son for you, for your salvation. A message that brings a smile to your face and joy in your heart. And a message that you must share and communicate with others. We stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us, men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. Amen. 